Welcome to Fox TV News, where everything is true. NWC worker gunned down in Waterford, St. Catherine. The St. Catherine South Police are investigating the shooting death of 35-year-old employee of the National Water Commission, who was gunned down on Saturday night. The deceased has been identified as Kemar Davis of Sprawlway in the parish. According to law enforcers, about 7.50 on Saturday night, residents reported the hearing gunshots and summoned the police. Upon arrival at the scene, the police found Davis suffering from multiple gunshot wounds to his upper body. He was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was pronounced dead. No motive has yet been established for the killing. Lottery scamming behind St. Best Farmer's death. Police believe lottery scamming is behind Sunday morning's killing of a man and the wounding of two others at a party in Cartage Newmarket, St. Elizabeth. Police have identified the dead man as Devoro Dorant, a 28-year-old farmer from Bridge River in the parish. The injured persons are 20 and 28 years old. The commanding officer for the St. Elizabeth Police Division, Superintendent Dwight Daly, told reporters that investigators have launched a top-level probe into the killing. We are following several leads but our investigation are pointing to lottery scamming as a possible motive, Superintendent Daly reported. He also revealed that the promoters of the party where the incidents occurred had applied and were given a permit for it to be held. Reports indicated that about 1.40 a.m., while the party was in full swing, Durant and another man were in his car when gunmen approached the vehicle. Police said the men opened fire, killing Durant and injuring the 20-year-old. The other man was standing near the car and was hit. He was not with Durant and the other man. Man killed at fundraising event in Manchester. Police are probing the murder of a 37-year-old man who was gone down at a fundraising event in Daviton in Manchester on Saturday night. The deceased has been identified as Aldine Belenfante, a resident of Daviton. A police report said about 9.25 p.m., Belinfante was at the event when two gunmen pounced on him and opened gunfire. He was rushed to hospital where he was pronounced dead. This latest incident brings to 14 the number of people killed in the South Central Parish since the start of the year. On Thursday, the Manchester police announced that they will not grant entertainment permits to six communities in the parish as part of efforts to fight crime and keep communities safe. Head of the Manchester Police Superintendent Lloyd Darby stated that restrictions have been imposed on entertainment events in Comfort, Broadleaf, Hartees, Greenfield, Newhall, and Maypen. 33-year-old man suspected of committing suicide in St. Catherine. A St. Catherine man is suspected to have committed suicide at his home in Ebonyville, St. Catherine, Sunday morning. The deceased has been identified as 33-year-old Anthony Green. According to information received from the Constabulary Communications Unit, Green was found hanging from a staircase with a belt tied around his neck. He was taken to the Spanish Town Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Family members revealed to reporters that Green had lost his job two weeks ago. Lucy gets facelift on the Paint the City, Paint the Town project. Lucy in Hanover has been refreshed to provide a more aesthetically pleasing environment for locals and visitors. The improvement was done under the Paint the City, Paint the Town project, which was officially launched in the parish capital on Friday by Minister of Local Government and Rural Development Desmond Mackenzie. The works included spurred up green and recreational spaces, painting murals to depict parish icons and landmarks, painting of the town seawall, and directing a new sign at the Hanover Municipal Corporation building. Repairs were also carried out at the Hanover Transportation Center, which now has a new sign and a garbage disposal area. A new sign was also mounted at the Cleveland Sand Hope Market, and the facility was repainted and beautified to enhance the experience of vendors and shoppers. The town of Hopewell was also given a facelift and the town's market rehabilitated. Paint the City, Paint the Town is a national beautification initiative to be executed over a three-year period. It will generate employment through repairs, mural painting, street signs installation, 
improvement of selected markets among other activities. Hanover Infirmary to get new matrons quarters. Minister of Local Government and World Development Desmond McKenzie says new matrons quarters are to be constructed at the Hanover Infirmary in Lucy, Hanover. The announcement was made during a visit to the institution on Friday. McKenzie said that the project will represent the final phase of the upgrading of the infirmary. He said the previous facility was destroyed years ago and the new quarters will provide a more comfortable working environment for the matron and other support staff. According to the minister, a therapeutic park will also be built to meet the physical, psychological and social needs of the institution's 38 residents. Meanwhile, Mackenzie said the kitchen being built at the infirmary is almost complete, with only minor work still to be done. He noted that the necessary furnishing and appliances, including a refrigerator, are being installed. The kitchen is being constructed at a cost of approximately $12 million. It will replace the old facility, which was closed by the Public Health Department. The Most Honorable Prime Minister Andrew Holness speaks about NDC partnership. I take this opportunity to underscore the welcome to Jamaica, which I'm sure you have received from Ministers Samuda and Davis. After two long years of grappling with the COVID-19 pandemic, it is indeed a pleasure to welcome our international partners to our shores. In our beautiful country, Montego Bay is known as the tourism mecca, but it is also one of the most vulnerable areas being impacted by the effects of climate change. For small island developing states like Jamaica, the 1.5 degree goal of the Paris Agreement is not merely an abstract target, but a matter of survival. Rising temperatures and consequential rise in sea levels, along with more extreme weather events, pose an existential threat to the health of our people, our economic advancement, and prosperity of our nation. There is no question that, as with other small island developing states, Jamaica has played little or no role in creating the climate crisis. More industrialized nations have driven their development by burning fossil fuels and clearing their land of forests. However, the cost of that economic growth, because of the changed climate, has fallen disproportionately on small island developing states. Notwithstanding this, Jamaica continues to play a leading role in the global response to climate change. Our updated nationally determined contribution presented in 2020 more than doubled our commitment to emission reduction. We have commenced the preparation of our 2050 long-term emissions reduction and climate resilience strategy. Our climate smart agriculture projects are integrating technology and bringing young people into climate action. Our mangrove restoration program is well underway together with our efforts to plant three million trees in three years and our fish sanctuaries and pilot programs for reef restoration are effectively engaging coastal communities. Many other developing countries similarly affected by the climate crisis are also stepping up with more ambitious efforts to embrace low carbon development and to defend themselves against the climate impacts that are already upon us. In Glasgow last year, we saw the presentation of extraordinary ambition by developing countries. The case for tangible financial allocation for developing countries has already been made. The Paris Climate Accord is built on a promise that where developing countries take action on climate, they can expect support, including the finance they need. The latest IPCC report published just this week confirms now is the time to deliver on that promise. Jamaica has demonstrated the engagement of best practices and provided examples of how financing from international partners can be put to good use. For instance, with grant support from development partners, Jamaica became the first small island developing state in the world to independently sponsor a catastrophe bond, which will provide financial protection against losses from hurricanes. Also, with GCF support, we have launched a green bond project with our stock exchange, 
towards mobilizing domestic and regional capital to finance resilient infrastructure projects. But this is only a start. What is needed is transformation from our existing models of development into one based on low emissions, greater resilience to climate impacts, and more sustainable growth. The scale and speed of finance is nowhere near the levels needed to drive this transformation. Processes for accessing finance are often too onerous and slow, and there is a lack of urgency and transparency in the system. That is why the development and launch here today of the NDC Partnerships Finance Strategy is so important and timely. Jamaica has the pleasure of chairing the partnership alongside our friends from the UK, and we are proud to be playing a lead role in this regard. With more than 200 countries and international institutions, the partnership brings together those with the power to turn promises of finance into reality. It is noted that members have already deployed approximately $1 billion US dollars through the partnership, supporting countries in laying the groundwork for finance. Advisors have been deployed to finance ministries, NDC investment plans have been developed, and viable projects identified. These are positive steps, but I implore you to appreciate the urgency of now. Meetings and discussions of investment capacity and project concepts need to transition to implementation. All implementation of climate mitigation or adaptation projects must put the people at the center of the plans. Our people need to be trained to manage the transformation of our economy to realize the benefits of greening our economy. These projects will require investments on a greater scale and deployed at a faster rate. It also means equipping critical players like finance ministries, central banks, and other national and subnational institutions with the expertise and technical resources to integrate climate action into their planning. It means mobilizing public funding as well as private capital. We recognize that we all work with political and institutional constraints that may make it hard to move at a fast pace. However, faced with a climate emergency, we must urgently change our mindsets and find creative ways to mobilize the necessary financing. The launch of our finance strategy signals our determination to make this happen and sends a strong statement regarding Jamaica's continued commitment and sense of urgency. The strategy clearly articulates a roadmap for alignment and scaling up of support when developing new programs. I reiterate that financing the implementation of action on the ground changes people's lives for the better and must be our focus going forward. Finally, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Jamaica's motto, out of many, one people, captures the spirit of our population, whose ancestors came from all corners of the globe and who today live and work in proud harmony. Faced with the challenge of climate change, this spirit of working together in harmony must extend across the globe. In Glasgow, in November 2021, I said no one is safe until everyone is safe, and I repeat that here today. Humanity faces a threat unlike any before, and we must ensure that every person, every nation, has the resources needed to meet it. That is no small task, but those gathered here represent leaders determined to take that task on. Everything will depend on our successful implementation of these actions. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, and click the notification bell for daily updates.